Thank you for tuning in to TalkWad.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. Welcome, America, to AmendmentOneRadio.com, where your First Amendment rights are still safe to say what's on your mind. <laughs> and we're back to another wonderful day with AmendmentOneRadio.com with me, Voice of America, sitting here and gabbing and having some fun, see what we can sit there and trash talk about now and uh, eh, have some fun with it. So, and actually we've been doing, uh, a series of, uh, videos, uh, for the past two shows. And, uh, we're probably going to go ahead and try and finalize one out. Uh, let's see. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Adam, we still got the other uh, video. Let's see if we can get them here. Whoa, Adam. Ding, ding. <laughs> let's see. Hey, we still got part of last week's video. The last portion of it. Okay, cool deal. Yeah, we're running to a little bit, uh, about two thirds of the way down. Yeah. Of central bank heads and finance ministers dubbed Bretton Woods II, the plan for world government was unveiled by the very bankers that had engineered the collapse. Formerly sovereign countries would now pay their taxes directly to the banking cartel. Hundreds of new carbon taxes controlling every facet of human activity would only be the beginning. Now all the elite had to do was to sell the public on accepting the final phase of their takeover. And it's Obama's job to sucker the public into standing down so the banker's agenda can move forward unhindered. Never before in U.S. history has the media gotten behind a president like they are behind Obama. The press has pulled out all the stops, bestowing a crown of infallibility upon Obama as the savior of the people. The elite are betting everything they've got on Obama's charisma and hoping that he can sell the world on their program of tyranny. Yes. There have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. Now we will reveal what Barack Obama and his controllers' true agenda is. Number one, bring the United States under the complete regulatory control of a private offshore superbank known as the Bank of the World. More than a hundred new taxes are now being developed under the umbrella of curbing greenhouse gases. The new taxes will be paid directly to the private bank consortium. At the producer level, Taxes will be paid on farm animals' flatulence. At the consumer level, there will be carbon taxes on all forms of meat, beef, poultry, pork, and fish. All cars will be fitted with satellite tracking boxes that will tax driving by the mile. And an added tax will be placed on all fossil fuels, including motor oil and natural gas. All plastic products will have a carbon tax added. Outdoor space heaters and fireplaces are to be taxed. All electricity produced by coal-powered plants will be taxed. 
Under the cap and trade system, citizens will be forced to pay taxes on thousands of products to private cap and trade services owned by Al Gore and other elitists. There will be taxes on light bulbs, water, trash pickup, air travel, train travel, bus, ship, medicine, steel production, mining, clothing, laundry, asphalt are just a few of the new taxes to be levied. But to truly transform our economy, to protect our security and save our planet from the ravages of climate change, we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need. The notion of anthropogenic global warming is a fraud. In other words, the idea that the planet is getting warmer and that human activity is somehow responsible is a pseudo-scientific fraud. It's a big lie. It's a monstrosity. Remember the Nazis, they had race science, race hygiene. They said Aryan blood is different from any other kind of blood. This was, of course, idiocy, a fantastic piece of nonsense. Today, we've got something similar. Global warming caused by human activity, and the answer to that is carbon tax plus cap and trade, according to the wishes of Al Gore, Prince Charles, and basically the entire uh, world uh, banking community, the world oligarchy. What they're trying to do with that is to perpetuate the current system where bankers rule the world, financiers rule the world, and the rest of us get the crumbs from the table. But remember, if you try to put on cap and trade and a global warming uh, carbon tax with the idea that you're going to save the polar bears, what you're going to do is destroy human society. You're going to cause genocide on a massive scale. The deaths will be measured in the hundreds of millions and indeed in the billions. Just the idea of global warming means that there'll be no development for Africa, no development for the poorer parts of Southeast Asia, and no world economic recovery of any kind ever in our entire lifetime. So it's important to expose and fight the pseudo-scientific fraud of global warming. One more point about this. You don't need a climatologist to know that this stuff is a fraud. I'm a historian. I can tell you. In the last thousand years, we had a period of very warm temperatures called the medieval warm period, where all kinds of grapes and uh, semi-tropical stuff were growing very far into the northern hemisphere. That was about 1100, 1200. It happened to correspond with an all-time um, maximum of sunspots. Right now, we can say that we're going into another maximum period where there'll be some warming, but we're well within the limits of the medieval warm period. About uh, 1600 to 1650, there was an ice age in northern Europe. The North Sea was filled with ice. The German and Dutch ports and the English ports were filled with ice. That corresponds to an all-time minimum of sunspot activity, the Spurer minimum and the Maunder minimum. So, this has largely got to do with solar activity. We can see that other planets, not just the Earth, are warming slightly as a result of increased solar activity. But we're well within the minimum. So what the oligarchs claim to be an open and shut scientific case is a piece of pseudo-scientific nonsense, and it should be rejected. Number two, the social engineers are fully aware that the Obama craze will wear off quickly. So they are racing to put in place the most oppressive police state control grid in human history. 20,000 battle-hardened regular army troops are now being deployed to patrol the streets of the United States. FEMA is now building giant camps in every region of the country. And the Congress has introduced bills like the National Emergency Centers Act, H.R. 645, which merges local governments and the police under federal control. And as we all know that have watched these things, they're ready for the riots with these detention centers that are being opened up around the country, with state police training for riot control in the, in the event of economic calamity and food riots. They know what's going on and they're prepared for it. So people better also prepare for it themselves. 
Anyone that's not prepared for what's going to happen, they deserve what they get. Because there's enough information out there pointing to the problems. And they should take all precautionary actions. Next, Obama ordered the Defense Department to issue DOD Directive 1404.10, establishing a one million person civilian army under his control. Simultaneously, Obama launched USAService.org, the new website deceptively masquerades as a federal agency, but in reality is a recruiting tool building a separate, completely private army outside of government that takes orders directly from Obama's controllers. Barack Obama has refused to rescind Presidential Decision Directive 51, signed by George W. Bush. The directive plainly states the president is a dictator and that Congress is ceremonial. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. President Obama and his Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel have repeatedly stated on the record that all Americans below the age of 64 will be forcibly conscripted into federal service. Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes with responsibilities. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. Now, it doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, uh, and at some point at that point, you do it. Obviously, I'm not going to say perfect legislation. We'll work that process through. Well, you can do it during a college right. summer. Right. You can do it after Anytime. high school. If you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement of personality cultists who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs, that's fascism. Obama's transition site, Change.gov, proclaimed that middle school and high school students will be forced to serve the federal government. Fascism is gutter up, streets up, hooligans, thugs, fervently idealistic students, swarming adolescents, just the kind of thing you see around Obama. The way you get a population to enslave itself when the police and the army are no longer enough to do that. So I think that's, that's uh, if you're a left liberal, uh, it's time to open your eyes to that. All young Americans between the ages of 18 and 24 will be conscripted into a paramilitary domestic security force. If Obama has his way, adults and seniors will also be forced into other forms of service for the betterment of the homeland. Number three, disarming the American people Obama operatives in the Congress have introduced more than 10 bills that would end the Second Amendment as we know it. H.R. 1022 would allow the new Attorney General Eric Holder the dictatorial power to ban any gun he wishes at will. In 2008, before the Supreme Court, in the D.C. gun ban case, District of Columbia versus Heller, Holder argued for the complete disarmament of the American people and that only the military should own firearms. H.R. 257 would ban all youth shooting sports, including YMCA and youth Olympic shooting clubs. H.R. 45 would force all gun owners to undergo federal psychological screening, registration, and testing to keep their firearms. White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel has proposed the extrajudicial banning of any American on the fraudulent no-fly list from owning any firearm. That is, if you are on the no-fly list because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist, you cannot buy a handgun in America. Over 25,000 Americans are added each month to the no-fly list, which numbers over a million people who have not been charged or convicted of any crime. It's a case of mistaken identity for a five-year-old boy from Normandy Park. He had trouble boarding a plane because someone with his same name is wanted by the federal government. King 5's Mimi Jung is live at SeaTac Airport to explain. Mimi. 
Lori, it's hard to believe that a five-year-old could be considered a threat, but that's exactly what happened here at SeaTac last week when Matthew Gardner showed up for a flight to LAX. And they fly in as five-year-olds go, Matthew Gardner is about as harmless as you can get. But when he and his mom checked in for their flight at SeaTac last week, Matthew was considered the criminal. If you're on that no-fly list, your access to the right to bear arms is canceled because you're not part of the American family. You don't deserve that right. There is no right for you if you're on that terrorist list. And even though this Matthew Gardner is only in kindergarten, TSA workers still conducted a full-blown search. Here they searched all of our belongings. They took everything apart piece by piece. Um, Nadia Counter says it wasn't easy being treated as a possible threat to national security. I picked up my child to give him a hug and tell him, you know, it's okay, we're doing fine. And they reported to me that I was not allowed to touch him. He was a security risk, and um, they had to re-search me to make sure that I had not um, obtained any materials from him. Number four, massive restrictions on the First Amendment guarantee of free speech. The President, Congress, and the FCC have announced plans to not only curtail speech on talk radio and newspapers, but to also regulate speech on the Internet through the Orwellian named Fairness Doctrine. The Obama machine is also pressuring Congress to pass draconian hate speech laws that will eviscerate the First Amendment. Number five, they plan to further federalize health care so that the government can dictate what kind of care citizens receive. Modeled after the British system, this includes rationing care and restricting what procedures the handicapped and elderly are eligible for. Number six, Obama is already pushing to expand the Department of Defense budget and to station more U.S. troops overseas to encircle Russia, China, Iran, as well as setting up bases in Africa under the pretext of humanitarian aid and dominate and occupy Africa through AFRICOM. So we're taking your phone call, seeing what you think of Barack H. Obama. Is he a Judas goat? Is he a front man? Is he a betrayer? Let's go to Anthony in Georgia. Anthony, what's your take on Barack Obama? Uh, they put the face of Barack Obama as uh, part of their their public relations because it's like in the old folk tales about vampires. A vampire cannot force his way into somebody's house. It gets, it's against some kind of metaphysical law. So the vampire has to persuade the resident of the household to open the door and invite him in. So they're going to look at the peephole at Barack Obama, which looks like them and appears to be on their side. They're going to say, okay, here's my ally. Let me open the door and let me let uh, this person in. And then Barack Obama is just, of course, a front man for the American empire where he's going to have the entire U.S. Navy, the entire U.S. Army, and the entire U.S. Marines under AFRICOM command. And, of course, he's going to turn it into a new Iraq, and he's going to turn it into a new Afghanistan. Everything, every operation that you see going on in Iraq and Afghanistan is going to propagate to the uh, poor countries of Africa. And well, sir, sir, I agree with you. Sir, I agree with you. They're looking to the people. They see a handsome, smiling African face. You know, he's all, hey, I'm from Kenya. And then it's a total bait and switch. But it's the same thing here in the United States where they would get sell out uh, Native American chiefs to sell out their people. This is the right. oldest trick in the book. And he can also pacify uh, uh, the most downtrodden minority groups in the United States. And he's saying, hey, get ready for sacrifice. Get ready to lose your standard of living. They're like, yay, I love Obama. They could never get away with this with a John McCain. Obama basically does uh, a couple of things. One is, again, this idea, kick the Chinese out of Africa. Kick them out of Sudan where they get oil. Kick them out of Zimbabwe where they get raw materials. Start a civil war in Congo, another big source of raw materials. Al-Qaeda, an arm of uh, the U.S. intelligence community, is now active in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. You've got a destabilization going on in Kenya around Odinga. That's Obama's cousin. This is a guy who has two uh, children. They're Obama's niece and, uh, well, nephew in a broad sense. Uh, and one of them is named Raul, and the other one is named Winnie, after Winnie Mandela, who did the necklacing and political assassinations in South Africa. So this... Odinga is essentially a CIA destabilizing operation in Kenya, and he's got a Odinga Islamic alliance to crush the Christians in 
in Kenya, but this also reaches into uh, Ethiopia, it reaches into Uganda, Congo, Tanzania, and a whole bunch of other countries in that region. So all of Africa is a battlefield in flames between the U.S. and the Chinese, with Obama leading the charge to kick the Chinese out for geopolitical reasons. Number seven, radically expand federal control over family farms and ranches through the animal ID and premises ID system. Number eight, accelerate the merger of the United States with Canada and Mexico under the Security and Prosperity Partnership. He is also accelerating the transfer of remaining federal authority to unelected quasi-governmental bodies like the World Trade Organization. Number nine, Obama must convincingly play the part of the president and convince the people of the United States that the buck actually stops with him. This is critical to the globalist master plan because in four to eight years, Obama must take the blame as Bush did for the New World Order's horrific agenda. At that point, the elite will put a new puppet in the ceremonial seat of power and build him up as the savior only to tear them down again. And so the process is repeated over and over. For their program to work, it is essential that the people not learn that the presidency is now nothing more than theater. Because if they did, the people would stop looking at the pawns and start looking for the king. Through this system of deceit, the elite's criminal agenda can continue forever because the people waste all of their political energy debating the media spectacle instead of investigating the globalist agenda. Number 10. It's Obama's job to sell the public on globalist policies that aren't in the people's best interest. But the overlords have many salesmen. His most important function is to protect the criminal oligarchs from prosecution while they loot the economy worldwide, start new wars, and engage in torture. They're called Generation O, and they were the key to Barack Obama's White House win. Campaign, Barack Obama used the internet like no other candidate before him, harnessing the energy of millions of his supporters. But the question now is, what to do with this young, eager, energetic army? This gives Barack Obama and his administration contact information for so many people. So next time he needs to push his legislation, he can contact all these people. Kennedy-esque. I feel as though this was like when John F. Kennedy was elected. Shouting, smiles, and tears. It was the scope of Obama's victory that was most impressive. I saw a photograph of Obama playing basketball. And I said, you know what? I see him as a leader. And that's the world that's in his hands. Known a piece of history, commemorating the day the world changed forever. His confident smile and kind eyes are an inspiration to us all. In summation, Barack Obama is a Madison Avenue created fad. All of the crazed Obama worship being pushed by the corporate media is scientifically designed to capture the public in a net of peer pressure mass euphoria. If the New World Order can just distract the public for a few more years, the elite can finish constructing their police state control grid. Now, a lot of times, we don't want to know the issue. Right. We don't want to know the issue. We feel, what do you call this thing where you get this false sense of gratification, but because a black man is in office, everything's going to be all right. No, everything's not going to be all right. Yeah. Until you look into the agenda and what the Democratic Party has been about, is about, and will be about, regardless if Barack Obama is the president or not. And that's real. Barack Obama is the perfect Trojan horse. He makes the people feel like they finally have a place at the table, even as he betrays them. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. Oh, it's such a blessing to see you, Mr. President. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Never in my life would think that this would ever happen. Sadly, many Obama supporters can't see what's right in front of their faces because they've already invested their very identity in this artificially created cult movement. Throughout history, it has happened over and over again. 
People turn their intellect over to cult of personality mass movements, and it's happening again. The evidence presented in this film is documented fact, and those that ignore what history has taught us do so at the peril of us all. As frightening as the information in this film is, there are many things we can do to stop the globalist agenda dead in its tracks. First, we expose the cult of Obama for what it is, a sad hoax. Next, realize that we are all being propagandized 24-7. Investigate all information for yourself, be it political parties, the media, or this film. Be aware of the tricks that the elite use, like the staging of false flag terror attacks and other crises. Rediscover the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Promote a culture of true liberty. There is a reason the internationalists are attempting to destroy the sovereignty of all 50 states. They know it is one of the biggest threats to their domination. The federal government has been completely hijacked by foreign interest, and more than 25 states have recognized this fact and are moving to block the New World Order at the state level by declaring their 10th Amendment powers. But most important of all, there is a huge awakening taking place in the United States and across the world against the globalist agenda. Free people everywhere are joining together and saying no to corruption and tyranny and no to world government. This is the center of endurance and endurance is what wins wars. Not how many people you kill, but how long can you endure? George Washington lost almost every battle he had but he endured, he out endured the British. And that's how the battle was won, endurance. And each and every one of you watching this, every single one of you is just as important as the people who were our founding fathers, as that you are just as important as the Sons of Liberty who met in the 1770s to, to philosophize about freedom, to philosophize about a republic, to philosophize about a truly free country with a republic. There's a billion people on the planet. It only takes one to change it. Are you the one? There may be everybody in your classroom bugging out. Your whole school may be on fire with kids wild and bringing guns in. But are you the one? Nature has a way of abundance. Nature puts out a lot of stuff looking for the one. So if you're gonna go along with the trend of let's just kill each other, let's disrespect each other, then you're part of nature's plan as well to be part of just the, 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 the excess. But if you think more of yourself than just being the excess, you'll do more for yourself. Are you the one? Everybody's not going to make it. But you have an opportunity to save yourself. Well, we don't have to look back thousands or even hundreds of years to see how dangerous this present day situation is. We can look back to Bolshevik Russia. We can see the takeover by the Bolsheviks talking about the people's revolution, talking about the positive change. And Lenin came in and then Stalin. The fact is, is that over 40 million Russians between 1925 and 1940, good Russian, people who were Christians, people who had, who had their own businesses, people who were educated, they were exterminated because they had their own business, because they were educated, because they believed, believed in God's law. We can look over at Germany. Germany was in a very, very terrible economic situation and this very charismatic leader called Adolf Hitler comes in he, he, he makes the roads good and he promises a better life for the people and within 10 years you see a completely nationalized centralized dictatorial situation where millions and millions of people were exterminated and then we can go to Maoist China Mao came in, he, he promised change, he promised a better life, 
and within five years, 60 million Chinese were exterminated. They don't teach that. They don't teach that in the schools these days. And it wasn't that long ago. And I pray, pray, pray to God that this will not happen in the United States. And the way it won't happen is if you and your friends and all of us together take action to say no. This country is too precious. It's too wonderful. It's, it's too good of a place to lay down as a victim. Greatness could arise once we break the shackles of the government that's holding us back. One thing America has more than any other country is an entrepreneurial spirit. One thing we have more than any other country is the ability to be innovators. You know, if I was born in Italy, I wouldn't be the trend forecaster I am today because I would have been locked into a culture of thinking one way. We have that freedom of expression and freedom of thought that could free us to create greatness again if, if Big Brother doesn't come down on us harder. Humankind is at a historic crossroads. The forces of globalism are marching towards absolute despotism. Look in the mirror, count the cost, and decide, are you going to let history repeat itself? Or will you stand tall with freedom lovers everywhere and stop the completion of a world dictatorship? Okay, and we're back now. Yeah, it's actually part of a three-part setup. That uh, yeah, because actually the video is on YouTube, and it is about uh, two hours long. And if I ain't mistaken, it's called the Obama conspiracy. So. It's actually pretty factual on quite a few aspects of it. And even where the narrator sits there and talks about uh, check in to what you're doing there, uh, check the facts, uh, see exactly, you know, on the key points that he was talking about, like Bilderberg, Trilabs, you know, the different names of the people that uh, are in office, you know, go online, check them out, look up their backgrounds and stuff, and start seeing for yourself. You know, is it fake? Is it a bunch of crock? You know, what exactly is it? So, I mean, a little bit of common sense goes a long way. You know, we, the people, have the right to be able to go in there and look up anything we want on the Internet and check it out. You know, as you can see in this video, you know, I'm always a skeptic, and it's just like, eh, you know, this is pretty far-fetched, you know. And But the thing of it is, is there's a lot of it that's not far-fetched. And if you sit there and you look up some of those orders that were signed, uh, you need to check them out because actually so far I found all the ones that were set in there are actually true law that have been signed. And, you know, with them skirting around the issue, the way that they're doing this, you know, I don't find it a cool thing to do at all, especially with the American people. You know, most people want to sit back and think, ah, oh, no, we can never do anything like that. And, uh, you know, what, what do you expect? You know, it's our government, you know, they make a couple mistakes here and there. It's not a problem. We can go on about our way and everything's fine. Well, no, it's not. Um, because if you sit back and you look at it, it's like this, we elect these officials to go in there and run them. Okay. Our government dummies down, uh, our entire population because you can't have everybody with a Harvard education, uh, Princeton, Yale, and all of this kind of stuff. So when you've got the people that have the knowledge and the power to be able to sit there and speak in a, you know, in a much better fashion than what your average American does, then it's like, I can throw words over your head that you don't know what's going on. And the people are like, okay, well, you know, that's cool. We can relate to that when you don't even know what's, what, what the meaning is. And, you know, and the problem here is this, it's not Republican, it's not Democrat, it's all of them together. If you think the new world order is a joke, you better think again, because it is the truth. The new world order was started, you know, as far back as Reagan, uh, when he tried it. The problem is, is it wasn't brought out to the public so much because it was being done, uh, so-called, uh, cloak and dagger deals. Uh, behind closed doors 
and uh, it was just brought into where it is really into the public eye within the past 12 years. And the problem with that is, is we sit back, we don't pay attention. We, you know, we don't care because, you know, we're more worried about, uh, you know, uh, some reality show or, you know, uh, something else that we can watch. And instead of paying attention to what these politicians are doing, and here's the bottom line to it. We, the people are the ones that have the power. Okay. Our power is almost gone because nobody wants to speak up. Nobody wants to speak out anymore. And this is the problem. And, you know, it's going to get to a point to where later on down the road, when you speak out, it can get you killed. Because right now it's a fact. NDAA one was signed by the president not too long ago, Obama, that you speak out against, uh, America. And if you're considered a terrorist threat, you can be arrested and locked up for life. No trial, no jury, no nothing. You're done. You're dead. You die in a cell. And guess what? He himself and the military have the power to go in there and arrest you for that. So now what do you think? You know, uh, do you sit back and think, oh, well, you know, these people are all a crackpot and you know, it's just, eh, it's all just BS. Well, you know something, how's your tax breaks working? You know, that tax break could have came through, but guess what? Now there's another tax hike that's coming up. All right. And the thing of it is, is he's a salesman. This man is one of the best, you know, I call him a used car salesman because, you know, there's not too many people that can sit there, break it off in you and, uh, you know, and make you feel good about it. I mean, really, this is a whole problem. We, the people have elected these people because we don't want to sit there and deal with it. So we let these people that have all the experience, well, that's the problem. They have the experience to manipulate everything that they do to work against the average American hardworking, bust your ass, ditch digging, truck driving, you know, any American job person. I mean, people, come on. Do you like the economy right now? If you do, you're a dumbass because I don't like it. I know there's other people out there that don't like it. There are certain aspects of the industries that are out there today that are making, you know, really good money and thriving very well. But also, you know, we keep getting told that, oh, we only have this little bitty unemployment rate in the nation. We only have this little bitty thing over here. Well, let's get real. Okay. Let's look at true facts. Let's see what the actual unemployment rate is. Because if anybody out there can sit there and honestly prove to me that our unemployment rate is actually 8%. I want you to prove it to me. Hell, call me up right now, 727-493-2055. Call me up. I'll be more than happy to sit there and answer and say, hey, what do you want to sit there and, uh, you know, prove it? Tell me. Tell me your theory. You know, is it the Democrats' fault? Is it the Republicans' fault? Or is it a combination of everybody? I'm not here to be a liberal. I'm not here to be a right wing or a left wing or any kind of chicken wing. I'm here to sit here and be an American. See, this is the problem that we have here. We are Americans. You know something? It's like you're black, white, pink, purple, red, blue, green. You're an American. That's all it is. People, we all have the same situation here. I see it on a daily basis. You know how many times I've been told in the past six months that People are disgraced to be an American because of what the government has done to this country. And you know, some of these people have been military people. I've even been told by various military people that I know that have sit there and said, uh, during the voting, uh, for the, uh, ballots that were shipped over to the United States for voting, a good majority of them didn't make it here. And I would say, from what I've been told, a good majority that would have changed the election did not make it here. <coughs> so, you know, where do you go? What do you do? People, 
if you've got 10 minutes and you can go watch a cartoon or you can go play some video game, <coughs> pardon me, that, you know, you got to go take a look. You have to go see. This is about, you know, your family members. This is about everything you got there. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to see. Your family members are going to suffer from it. Your children's children's are going to suffer from this. People, we are heading for a situation of a dictatorship of a world government that will become unstoppable. You will not be able to stop it. And everybody wants to sit around and say, oh, it's doom and gloom. Uh, you people don't know nothing out there. You know, what do you expect? You know, our government would never do that. Better think again, because if you really believe that an airplane crashed into the Pentagon, or do you believe that papers flying that were on fire uh, flew over to Building 7 and 9-11 and just caused that whole building just to blow up and collapse? I mean, come on. Are we that stupid? You know, it's actually, you know, really ridiculous. I don't get it, and I'm not going to accept it. You know, people, you can go on anything on there, your government.coms, your, you know, your government.gov, you know, all your different government internet sites, get on there. Look up the name of your senators. Look up the name of your congressmen. Look up the name of the politicians that represent your area. Get your ass out there. Get on the phone. Start writing letters to them. Start telling them what's going on. Because you know something? By 2016, I'll make the best prediction in the world here. And I'll bet you I'll be probably about 95 to maybe eh, 99% right. Your guns? Good luck. Because it's already been said that there are actually law enforcement agencies that are going into pieces of people's houses now that, uh, oh, cool. Hey, we got a call here. What's on your mind, caller? Who are you? Uh, I hope I'm not on the air or anything. Uh, oh, sure. Calling. Hey, we're keeping you in there. What you want to talk about? Uh, I was just calling about the Think Up Unlimited Possibilities show coming up. Okay. Your host, your host is downstairs and says the doors are locked. If someone could open them. Yeah, they'll get you right to take care of. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that was a quick uh, call there that we got fixed. <laughs> so. Yeah, ain't life terrible, you know? They lock the doors to the building so the people can't get in, so they got to call me. So, yeah, call me if you're locked out of your house. But, hey, what the heck? So, but, you know, and this is the thing that we got. So, and, you know, and it's just something that we have to really, uh, we've got to pay attention real quick, and we've got to make good things happen. People, the elections, your regular state elections are coming up in 2014, okay? We've got two years to prepare. Americans have to start thinking now because you know something? You got to start getting these crooks, thieves, bums, liars out of office. That's all there is to it. You can no longer sit there and let these people represent us. We have state attorneys. We have uh, mayors, districts, uh, you know, everything. People, it doesn't take that much to run for these offices. Stand up. We need to be proud of this country again. And we, the people, we, as in Americans, need to realize that we've got to bring our own party here. We've got to bring our own conventions. And we've got to make a hell of a difference and get uh, going with it. Or else, you know, uh, we're going to be stuck behind in a bad situation to where, you know, we're going to get screwed worse than we already are. So, and it's just, where does the madness stop? And it's just like, you know, we got to go in there and keep going and, uh, really make the difference. So, and this is why I say, you know, it's up to you because you've got certain individuals in politics right now that are wanting to sit there and take out different schoolings, uh, for, you know, kindergarten you know, because they don't need to be in kindergarten because it's a conflict of interest for them to try and be able to read and learn to read. So, and read to learn. 
So, you know, and this is the kind of stupid stuff. Really? All these other politicians, they had that opportunity and they took it. So, you know something? Keep sitting on your asses out there, America. Keep sitting in those chairs. Keep sitting there watching the uh, reruns of Seinfeld and everything else. You know, keep enjoying that because you're going to lose your First Amendment rights. You're going to lose your Second Amendment rights. And people, it doesn't get better from there. So, and it's just like, now, are you going to do something about it? Are you going to say something about it? It only takes one letter from each person, an email, a phone call, something. We start getting 500 million phone calls, emails, and letters and stuff getting sent into D.C. Guess what? They're going to wake up real quick. And then that big, wonderful machine that they got up there that's rolling over top of us, it's going to hit a bad bump in the road, and we're going to make them detour. So now, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? People, it's not that hard. You know, it's an easy thing to do. And you know something? It's the regular people that can make the differences. Instead of going in there, have some candidate that's handpicked by some a big attorney firm or something like that, get your ass out there, run for an office. Put your office up to where you can go online and you can have accounts to where you can have money donated to you. Get the regular people out there to donate a buck, five bucks, anything they can do where these corporate companies go out and they donate uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, even millions of dollars. Well, guess what? If you've got the people backing up behind you, then you can make a difference because there's a lot more people that can go in there and make a difference than the corporate can sit there and sling money. Because I guarantee you, this is a situation that the Americans can win. Not big government, not the machine. You got to make a difference. So I tell everybody, hey, help your fellow man. Try and do something. If you can go to these mom and pop stores, you know, and go in there and make some, uh, you know, buy something from them, help the economy that way. If you've got accounts in uh, banks, hey, let me ask you something. How much money are you earning on those accounts? What, 25%? You know, no, you're not. You're doing 0.25%. Okay. But hey, go get a loan from them. They'll charge you 8%. So, but anyways, people, you got to do your due diligence and keep checking everything. Do your checks and balances. Do your research. We've got two years to make a difference. And I hope within two years that I'm going to have 100,000 plus listeners uh, that's going to be on Facebook with me. And we'll march our ass down to D.C. right across from the White House. And you know something? We can all turn around. We can all bend over, drop our pants, and tell the government, kiss our ass, and let's make a difference. People, we stand united, we win. We stand divided, we lose. So get off your ass. Make a difference. And this is Voice of America. We're done for today's show. So everybody, take it easy. Cool. We'll see you next week because I'll show you one hell of a video next week. Take care, America.